Hi guys, welcome to Kaylee King. Today, we will be recapping the events of a Western action movie from 2012, Django Unchained. There will be spoilers ahead. Please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Let's begin. The premise of the movie is set in the 1800s, where slavery was legal, and black people were considered slaves by the white. The scene opens in Texas, where two brothers that go by the name Speck Brothers, are carrying some black slaves somewhere. Their journey is soon interrupted by a German dentist, Dr. King Schultz. He explains to the Speck brothers that he is looking for a slave that has worked in the Karakan plantation. One slave says yes. So Schultz goes near that slave, Django. He asks him if he has worked in the Karakan plantation and, and would he be able to recognize the owners that go by the name Brittle Brothers. Django says yes, so Schultz wants to buy him. But, the Speck brothers deny his offer, so Schultz is forced to shoot one brother, and injures the other one. Then he makes a receipt of buying Django, and throws money at the injured brother. Schultz then leaves with Django, and the other slaves kill the injured brother. The scene ends there, and now we see Schultz and Django in a town. There, people are shocked to see a nigger on a horse. Actually, black people are referred to as niggers, and it's uncommon for them to ride horses. Then they stop in a bar to talk, but the barkeeper refuses to serve a nigger. So Schultz points his gun at the barkeeper, and he runs to call the sheriff. Now, Schultz and Django sit together and Schultz explains that he is a bounty hunter. It means he kills criminals and presents them to the jurisdiction for money. And he wants to kill the Brittle brothers as they are wanted criminals. So he has hired Django to help him recognize the real Brittle brothers. In the meantime, the barkeeper arrives outside the bar with Sheriff. But, Schultz takes his gun out from his coat and instantly shoots him. All the people around get scared, and the barkeeper runs to call the marshal. Now the marshal arrives outside the bar and asks Schultz and Django to surrender. Schultz agrees to surrender and comes out from the bar with a wanted warrant for the sheriff. He explains to the marshal that the sheriff was actually a criminal in disguise, and he was wanted by the court of Texas. This way, Schultz and Django leave the town safely. Then at their camp, Schultz asks Django what would he do after being free? Django replies that he would go and free his wife, Brumhilda. Then we get a little flashback, where an R was imprinted on Django and Brumhilda's face for attempting to run away. Here, we also get to know that Brumhilda could speak German as she was raised by German owners. Now Schultz and Django stop in Tennessee, and Schultz explains his plan. According to him, both of them will visit the Karakan plantation, and Django will play the role of a free servant. So, once they are there, Django can find the Brittle brothers and kill them. Now they get ready and reach the mansion of Spencer Bennett. Schultz plays the role of an expensive buyer and goes inside with Spencer. Meanwhile, Django goes to Rome in the garden and finds the Brittle brothers. He kills one brother right away as he was torturing a slave. Then he takes a hunter, and beats the second brother brutally before finishing him off. Schultz then arrives at the scene, and shoots the last brother from a distance with his rifle. Seeing all this, Spencer Bennett arrives at the scene with his men. But Schultz explains that these three brothers were actually criminals and there was a bounty on their head by the Texas court. Spencer is forced to let Schultz leave, but makes up his mind of taking revenge. At night, we see Schultz putting something inside his carrot before going to sleep. There, Spencer gathers all his men and comes to kill Django and Schultz. But Schultz and Django are already away from their carrot and Schultz shoots the dynamite he has stored inside. A big blast happens, and Spencer's several men get injured. Spencer starts to run away, but Schultz has made up his mind about killing him. He gives his rifle to Django and asks him to shoot Spencer. Django hits the bullseye and kills Spencer from far away. Schultz gets impressed by Django's natural talent, and offers him a job. He asks Django to work with him till the winter, and then he would help him find Brumhilda. Django takes the proposal and the two of them start hunting bounties together. On Django's first bounty, he has to kill a criminal who's working on the farm with his son. He hesitates at first seeing the kid, but shoots him like a sharpshooter and kills him. Schultz again gets impressed, and gives Django the man's wanted poster as a good luck charm. Over the next few months, we see Django and Schultz working together, and collecting bounties. Now the winter ends, and Schultz keeps his promise of helping Django find his wife. They check the records, and find out that Brumilda was purchased by a guy, Calvin Candy, who owns a big cotton plantation. Now they make a plan to free Brumhilda. Calvin Candy is a huge fan of Mandingo fights, which are basically two black slaves fighting to the death. 
So Schultz will play the role of a Mandingo fight organizer, who wants to buy one of Calvin's top fighters. And they would make an offer so ridiculous that Calvin would be forced to say yes. And Django would play the role of a Mandingo fight expert, who can recognize talented and strong fighters. This way, they would buy Broomhilda along with Calvin's top fighter. Now in the evening, they meet Calvin Candy at his bar, who is already watching a Mandingo fight. In the fight, Calvin's fighter gets in control, and on his command, kills the other fighter with a hammer. Now the two parties sit together and Schultz offers $12,000 to buy the top fighter. Calvin is unable to refuse this ridiculous offer, and invites them to his farm. The following day, all of them leave for the farm, and Django has completely gotten into his character. He is acting like a rude black man, and even gets into an argument with a white man. On their way, a nigger is presented before Calvin, who tried to run away. Calvin punishes him in front of everyone, and releases his rabid dogs to kill him. Schultz gets super sad seeing this, as he doesn't discriminate between people based on their color. Later, they finally reach the farm and Calvin meets his widow wife, and the loyal housekeeper, Stephen. Stephen gets irritated seeing Django, a nigger on a horse, but calms down on Calvin's command. Now, Schultz demands the German slave Brimhilda as he wants to talk to someone in his mother tongue. Calvin approves his demand, as he is trying hard to please his guest. Here, Stephen tells Calvin that Brimhilda is actually being punished, as she dared to run away. She is locked in a metal box under the sun, naked. Calvin's slaves now release her and get her ready to present her to Schultz. In the evening, Broomhilda is presented to Schultz, and he explains everything to her in German, so no one gets suspicious. At night, both parties sit together for dinner, and discuss the proceedings for their trade. Schultz says that he'll come back within five days with his lawyer, and sign the papers for buying the fighter. Here, Broomhilda can be seen really happy, as he has met her husband after so long. Stephen notices this, and gets suspicious. He asks Brimhilda if she knows Django, but she denies it. He soon finds out that Django is her husband, and decides to tell everything to Calvin. In the dining room, Schultz was just about to present his proposal for buying Brimhilda, but Stephen interrupts, and takes Calvin to the library. In the library, Stephen explains everything to Calvin that they are here to only buy Brimhilda, and everything else is just a farce. Calvin slowly understands everything, and goes back to the dining table. He puts a hammer above Brumhilda's head, and asks Schultz and Django to pay $12,000 for her. Schultz reluctantly pays $12,000 and saves Brumhilda. Now Calvin gets all the paperwork ready and both parties sign the contract. There, we see that Schultz is still horrified and disgusted by the scene where Calvin's dogs killed a man. Nevertheless, the three of them start to leave, but Calvin stops them. He says to Schultz that according to their law, no deal is complete without the parties shaking hands. Schultz denies shaking hands, and even humiliates Calvin for his brutal nature. But Calvin is adamant and he says that they cannot leave unless they shake hands with each other. Schultz reluctantly moves towards Calvin to shake hands, but instead, takes out his gun and shoots him. Calvin's slave quickly responds and kills Schultz with a shotgun. Now Django takes out his guns and starts a massacre in the mansion. He kills many people, but runs out of bullets after some time. And Stephen blackmails him that if he doesn't surrender, he'll shoot Brumhilda. Django reluctantly surrenders and comes out. Stephen and his men torture Django and hang him upside down. One of the men wants to kill Django, but Stephen stops him and tells him that he sold Django to a mining company where he'll break stones till he dies. Now we see three men taking Django and other slaves to the mines. On the way, Django convinces them that he's a bounty hunter, and not a regular slave. He shows the warrant that Schultz gave him, and tells the three men that they can go back to kill the Brittle brothers and earn $7,500. The three men believe him, and free him to find the Brittle brothers. But, as soon as they give a gun to Django, he kills all the three men in an instant, and goes back to save Brumhilda. He again starts a massacre at the farm, and kills all the men, but lets women slaves go away. Lastly, he shoots Stephen in the knee, and then blows up the entire mansion before leaving with Brumhilda. That was it for the recap guys. Don't forget to subscribe, and comment on the movie you would like to see next. Thanks for watching.